I cannot believe that just two months ago this space used to look like this. That was my first desk setup when I was just starting out and after about a an year, it was time for an upgrade. I needed a space that would boost my productivity and efficiency and help me grow my video production business. Hey, I am Anshuman and in this video, I'd like to take you on a tour of my content creation slash productivity workspace. Let's jump in. Before we begin, just a little disclaimer, this video isn't sponsored. I have bought everything that you're about to see and I have linked them down in the description just in case you want to check them out. The base of this setup is a height adjustable desk from Rife. This is my first sit stand desk and I wasn't very sure if I should invest in one, but I'm glad I did. My back feels better than ever and I stay more active throughout the day. I'm building a habit of standing up for 45 minutes for every hour I spend in my chair. This desk came without the desktop which I had later custom built and installed and it was considerably cheaper than if I would buy a fully built one. The desk legs are made of steel and they are sturdy enough to hold a weight of up to 70 kgs which is good enough for any kind of setup that I had put on it. The only complaint I have is that this desk comes without a memory function, it just has two up and down buttons, although it's not that big a deal. Now coming on to the centerpiece of this desk, the LG 34WN750 ultrawide monitor. It is perfect for my content creation needs as it has a 34 inch color calibrated IPS panel which has a resolution of 3440 by 1440 which isn't as good as 4K but I think it's good enough to keep everything looking sharp and you cannot really see the pixels until you get really close to this monitor. This monitor is great for video editing because of its 21 is to 9 aspect ratio instead of the normal 16 is to 9 ratio because you get a lot more space on your timeline and you can see a lot of footage that you are working on. I mostly create content for the web and this monitor having a color accuracy of 99% sRGB is good enough for my everyday workflow. If you'd like a more detailed review of this monitor, do let me know in the comments below. Sitting on top of this monitor is a light bar from a brand called Tusker that I also bought off of Amazon. It has some good features like a 60 minute timer which will turn off the light automatically after 60 minutes of use. Also it has stepless dimming and it is touch sensitive both at the front and on the top. It comes with 3 color temperatures and doesn't cause any glare on the display while I'm using it. I prefer light bars instead of desk lamps because they do not take any space on your desk and they can work with the USB power from your monitor. Also because they are really trending right now and I've seen one in every desk setup that I viewed on YouTube or Instagram. To create some biased lighting, I have set up LED strips behind the monitor and the desk that I can control with this remote and change the color or the brightness according to my preference. My daily driver is the M1 MacBook Pro that I bought in 2021. It is the base model with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage which might not seem a lot but it's plenty for my everyday needs as it's powerful enough and I mostly edit off of external hard drives. The only issue I have with the MacBook Pro is the lack of ports which Apple has fixed in its latest models. But for now I'm using a USB hub from Pybox which I have stuck under my desk and I connect all my peripherals to it. To keep the setup looking minimal I use the Logitech K380 keyboard mainly because of its small and compact form factor. Two things that I really love about this keyboard. One is that Logitech claims the battery backup is of two years and the other is how quickly this keyboard connects to my MacBook every time. Instead of a mouse, I prefer a graphic tablet. This one is from Wacom and I have been using it for about two years now. I find it to be more precise while using apps like Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve. Plus, I like the feel of using a pen over a mouse. But again, this is a personal preference. The headphones that I use are the AKG K92 monitoring headphones. These are great for video editing. And if you'd like a more in-depth review, check out my last video that I have linked down below. The chair I'm sitting on is an ergonomic chair from Casa Copenhagen that I also bought off of Amazon. Nothing special about it, this is a budget ergonomic chair and it comes with some options that you can use to customize it according to your needs like adjustable armrest, lumbar support and the headrest. Basically the options that you would get in every chair at this price range. As I'm also going to use this space to record my YouTube videos, let me show you the setup that I have. As my key light, I'm using the Aperture Amaran 100D with the 80cm Godox Octo Softbox and I have a grid installed on it to restrict the throw of light. The Aperture light is really powerful and let me tell you that I'm just using it at 20% power right now. Now coming to my fill light, this is a bi-colored LED panel from Osaka that I bought about a year ago. You can directly plug this into a socket or run it with battery power in case you need to. Now the camera I'm recording this on is the Canon EOS RP that I have in front of me on a tripod. 
the audio you are listening to is being recorded on the Mauno AU100 Lavalier microphone. I record with this mic on my phone using the Rec4 app. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to show some support. In case you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. That's all for now. Have a great day.